Hi there, I'm Ben Mulrooney, and I am so excited to be with you for this first ever Walk for CMT in support of Muscular Dystrophy Canada. I first learned about CMT, or Charcot Marie Tooth, when I met my longtime friend Kevin Harrison, and learning more about the challenges he and others encounter and the way they meet these challenges head on, it really inspired me to learn more and to get involved. But enough about me and why I'm here. We've got a great show for you today with stories from the CMT community, updates from researchers and clinicians, entertainment, prize draws, and more. And something really important to remember is that all funds raised from this event will support the CMT community through investments in research programs and services that you'll hear about shortly. First, I want to acknowledge the generous support that has made this event possible. Heartfelt thanks go out to TurboMed Orthotics and FOCI Solutions. These sponsors are committed to helping individuals affected by CMT. And you may already know it, but I sure didn't, that CMT is the most common inherited neurological disorder, and it affects approximately one in 2,500 Canadians. All right, I'm going to turn it over to the experts now to tell us more about CMT, talk about how it's diagnosed and some of the current challenges, but also opportunities. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Rami Massey. I'm a neurologist at the Montreal Neurological Hospital. I'm a neuromuscular specialist. My name is Dr. Stephanie Plamondon, and I'm a physical medicine and rehabilitation specialist working in Calgary. I'm a clinical associate professor in the Department of Clinical Neurosciences here. Also a member of Hotchkiss Brain Institute and Matheson Center for Mental Health Research and Education. Uh, I'm Benoit Gentil. I'm an assistant professor at McGill University. I have been working on uh, Charcot Marie Tooth for several years now, and I'm um, trying to uh, to find uh, how this disease is uh, is causing uh, trouble in uh, in patients. So CMT refers to Charcot Marie Tooth disease. Uh, it's the name of three neurologists who describe this disorder. It's a disorder of peripheral nerves. So it's a dis- disorder of the nerve endings in the arms and the legs, and you know all the nerves and the uh, in the body. Um, so, and it affects both the sensory nerves. So the nerves that give us sensation and provide sensation back to the brain and also the motor nerves. So the nerves that control the muscle. Um, so CMT is the most common inherited, um, neuropathy. So the most common inherited nerve problem, um, and it's a progressive, slowly, a degenerative disorder of the nervous system. What can happen when um, this uh, neuromuscular condition progresses is that there can be more and more weakness that uh, develops in the foot and ankle area in particular and in the hand muscles so that it it can be uh, more difficult to walk with a normal gait pattern. Um, There may be difficulty with tripping. Um, There may be difficulty with fatigue because it's less energy efficient to have weakness in the limb muscles over time. And so people may need over time to use braces or orthotics or use um, a cane for balance. It also can affect the the sensory feedback or the proprioception of where someone is placing their foot when they're walking. Um, So both the sensation in the feet and the strength in the muscles are affected. Um, and sometimes it can be painful. And we often uh, need an EMG uh, or nerve conduction studies to uh, help us uh, classify and confirm the diagnosis of Charcot Marie Tooth. So nerve conduction studies are, uh, they sound a little bit like torture and a lot of patients don't like them, but it's basically small electrical shocks given uh, on the skin uh, to the nerves. And then we record the nerve response or the muscle response after that electrical shock. CMT um, can have a genetic diagnosis if there are a certain type the demyelinating type is, is the most common, uh, but there are some versions of hereditary neuropathy, neuropathy that uh, are more difficult to diagnose genetically, and there's only a, um, a certain proportion that will be able to be confirmed genetically, but this is changing year after year. Genetics is, uh, area is exploding in the last uh, several years, and so many new um, types of CMT are being described and confirmed genetically, so that helps down the road with uh, figuring out the mechanism of why um, the hereditary neuropathy is occurring and then treatment options may be developed after that. The current research we are doing is to find therapeutic opportunities for different forms of chakra tooth because uh, you have a lot of uh, different causes. 
and uh, not all the Sharpenry tooth uh, patient uh, resemble to uh, to one another. So that's uh, that's a big challenge. Comprehensive clinical care, I think, refers to the fact that you want to treat the patient uh, as a whole and uh, follow the patient over time across their disease spectrum. Not only provide a diagnosis or a genetic diagnosis, and then uh, see them. Uh, only as needed, but um, I think it's good to follow these patients um, over time. Chakramoy tooth disease is very complex, has multiple uh, consequences, and that's why you really need a, a multidisciplinary team around you. In our clinic, we are so lucky to have um, uh, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech language pathology, dietitians, uh, social work. Um, and the neurologists, it's always, you know, it's so great to have everyone under this in the same um, clinic and location to, to troubleshoot together and, and work together to have the, hopefully the best recommendations for our patients. Oh, thank you so much for helping us better understand CMD. But now I want to introduce you to Marie-Pierre Quiche. Marie-Pierre, well, she wears many hats. She lives with CMT. She's a caregiver to her mother who also shares in the diagnosis. She's a long time volunteer with MDC. She participates in the Walk for MD. She's a former MDC staff member, and she's active in MDC networks and other activities. So the question is, what doesn't she do? But all, all kidding aside, Marie-Pierre is here today to share her story and the reason that she's so involved in the MDC community. Marie-Pierre, are you there? Donc, bonjour Ben, merci beaucoup de, de m'accueillir pour cet événement de la première distromarche pour le Charcot-Maritou. Au cours des Bon, je dirais peut-être dix dernières années, certainement, peut-être même un petit peu plus ou un petit peu moins, mais je suis assez certaine d'avoir eu mon dix ans euh, dernièrement. Euh, je me suis impliquée avec euh, du Trophée musculaire Canada de toutes les façons, je pense. Euh, J'ai vraiment euh, tout fait et je continue à en faire encore euh, beaucoup pour eux. Euh, parce que j'aime ça, j'en ai besoin. C'est un besoin en dedans de moi. J'ai besoin de côtoyer des gens qui comprennent euh, ce que je vis, qui, qui vivent ce que je vis. Euh, j'ai besoin de redonner aux autres. Euh, j'ai besoin euh, de me faire du bien en même temps. Ça touche vraiment beaucoup d'aspects dans ma vie. Qu'est-ce qui me donne espoir? Qu'est-ce qui me donne peut-être moins espoir? Qu'est-ce qui m'inquiète? Ça, c'est un sujet que je n'aborde pas nécessairement beaucoup. Euh, et là, vous allez me dire, mais mon Dieu, Marc-Pierre, t'es donc bien négatif. C'est pas négatif, mais c'est plus peut-être être réel, je sais pas, je, je, je vais pas me faire tirer les roches. J'ose espérer qu'un jour, on trouve quelque chose pour nous aider. OK, ça, pour vrai, j'en rêve, j'aimerais vraiment ça, euh, qu'on puisse stopper le charcot martou euh, qu'on puisse, tu sais, j'en rêve, puis j'aimerais tellement ça, mais honnêtement, Rendu à 32 ans, mes espoirs pour moi, j'en ai pas vraiment à accepter parce que tu vas voir que là, les limitations vont apparaître. C'est normal. Mais fais-toi pas de fausse, fais-toi pas peur avec ça, OK? Continue à avancer. Vas-y une chose à la fois, une étape à la fois, une seconde à la fois s'il faut. Entoure-toi des gens qui t'aiment. Entoure-toi des gens qui croient en toi. Entoure-toi de gens qui sont positifs dans la vie. Va chercher les gens qu'il faut pour t'accompagner. Un médecin, un neurologue, pousse, fais-en des appels si tu n'as personne comme médecin qui te suit. Votre enseignant physio, votre enseignant en ergo, pousse, pousse, pousse. Puis quand tu vas voir tout ton entourage autour de toi, la vie va juste être tellement belle. Vas-y au jour le jour, OK? Fais-toi du bien, fais des choses que tu aimes. Pense à toi. Hey, c'est un peu égoïste de dire ça, là, mais vient un moment dans la vie, là, vient des moments dans nos vies là, où est-ce qu'on doit penser à nous. Oublie-le jamais. Tu es une personne forte. Tu es une personne exceptionnelle. Tu es une personne avec plein d'amour. Vis à ta vie. Vis ta vie comme tu as envie de la vivre et pousse au maximum. Un jour, peut-être ton corps va te dire de ralentir, mais c'est correct. Ralentis. Mais continue ton chemin. Le chemin il sera toujours beau de A à Z. Lâche pas. Tu es une personne exceptionnelle. Gros, 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 gros. Merci à tous les participants de la première édition de la Ditromarche pour le Charcot Martou ou de la CMT. 
Merci d'être là. J'espère vous voir l'année prochaine. En vrai, pas juste à travers un écran, mais vous rencontrer. Euh, je vous dis merci de vivre voix. Même si je le fais un peu à travers la caméra, c'est pas pareil. Euh, donc, j'espère vous rencontrer dans les prochaines années. Ce n'est que le début. Merci. Thank you so much, Marie-Pierre. And it's incredible to hear about your involvement in the community and how that in turn helped give back to you and your family. Well, Muscular Dystrophy Canada is committed to meeting the needs of the CMT community in meaningful and interactive ways. And now I want to introduce you to MDC's VP Program Services, Marie-Hélène Bolduc, to explain how they do that. Bonjour, Ben. Merci. Je suis très contente d'être ici aujourd'hui pour cette première édition de la Distromarche pour la CMT. Moi, je vais vous parler des programmes et services que nous offrons à Dystrophie Musculaire Canada. Tout d'abord, nous sommes très heureux de travailler avec la communauté des personnes touchées par la CMT afin de leur fournir du soutien, de l'information à jour, que ce soit sur la recherche, la maladie, les traitements. Nous sommes aussi à l'écoute des besoins et nous travaillons très fort afin d'influencer les changements positifs. Parmi les types de soutien que nous offrons, il y a tout d'abord le programme d'aide technique qui nous permet d'aider les personnes atteintes et leurs familles en finançant des équipements qui vont favoriser leur mobilité, leur sécurité, l'accessibilité ou leur autonomie. Nous avons aussi un programme d'aide à la navigation des systèmes de santé communautaire. Ceux-ci sont souvent complexes, alors nous, on les aide à naviguer à travers ces systèmes-là. Il y a les rencontres de réseautage CMT qui sont destinées aux personnes atteintes de cette maladie. Ces rencontres constituent une bonne occasion pour partager avec des personnes vivant des situations similaires et aussi pour créer des liens. Il y a les rencontres de réseautage qui sont destinées aux personnes touchées par les maladies neuromusculaires en général. Celles-ci ont pour but d'aborder des sujets divers qui peuvent intéresser euh, les personnes, par exemple l'emploi, l'annonce du diagnostic, euh, être parent avec une maladie neuromusculaire, un survol de la génétique, etc. On est vraiment à l'écoute des besoins et des demandes et euh, c'est un excellent lieu de partage d'expériences entre les participants. Enfin, nous avons no notre programme de sensibilisation auprès des élèves, des enseignants ou des professionnels de la santé et ce programme-là nous permet euh, d'expliquer la maladie, de mieux faire comprendre la maladie. Alors voilà, je vous remercie. Passez une très belle distromarche pour la CMT. Thanks, Marie-Hélène. Well, as Marie-Hélène just shared, support programs and services for Canadians impacted by CMT or any neuromuscular disorder for that matter, they're incredibly important. But just as important for anyone living with a life-changing condition is research. Research is critical to understanding disorders, identifying new therapies and treatments, and working towards a cure. We asked some of the CMT experts to talk about what is currently happening in CMT research, therapies, and what is on the horizon. Please join me in welcoming them now. I think there was one small revolution that already started maybe seven years ago when we started having access to next generation sequencing, which is a type of genetic testing that allows us to test for hundreds of genes at a time. You know, before 2014, we used to test for one gene at a time, and we would often test for the gene for CMT1A, but if this were to be negative, uh, we, we would have a lot of difficulty confirming CMT genetically in other types of CMT, just because they're so rare, there's so many genes that can present um, with that phenotype, with that presentation. So uh, starting in 2014, we started having access to um, genetic testing for over 100 genes. And, and, and you know, while we this didn't lead to diagnosing everybody with the specific genetic type of CMT, it certainly allowed us to, to increase the number of people on whom we had a genetic diagnosis, which is really the first step towards um, prevention, understanding, uh, you know, understanding the pathophysiology, and eventually towards potential medication. So that was a huge revolution in 2014. Um, now, because we have access to these genetic testing, because we understand much better the genes that are involved, and we're starting to see some genetic treatments. I think there's some pretty good buzz right now about the new research studies that are progressing in CMT1A, some actual pharmacological treatments that might be close to being an option for people. 
I think that um, mobility aids and advancements in technology with respect to bracing or even exoskeletons. I want uh, the CMT community to know that uh, by uh, meeting you, uh, by having contact with you, your 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 source of uh, inspiration, and uh, you're providing uh, providing a lot of uh, strengths to uh, the different partners uh, that are uh, working with you. So uh, never forget your strengths. Uh, and let's work together to, uh, to tackle these uh, diseases. MDC knows research is the key to changing the lives of Canadians affected. Not only do they work with the research community worldwide and provide funding for promising projects, but they also have their own in-house researchers. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Homira Osmond, MDC's Vice President of Research and Public Policy. Doctor? Muscular Dystrophy Canada is a dedicated Canadian source of funding for neuromuscular research. And thanks to the generosity of our community, we have been able to maintain momentum and ensure the incredible advancements currently taking place in research are accelerated. MDC funds translational and clinical research across a broad set of neuromuscular disorders, including CMT. In the past two years alone, we have invested in two Canadian studies on CMT. One by Dr. Alex Parker, a pharmacogenetic pipeline for Charcot-Marie tooth disease, and the other by Dr. Benoit Janty, therapeutic potential of CK1 agonist in inherited peripheral neuropathy. Both of these studies have potential to inform drug discovery and development. In addition to investing in ongoing research, we know seeking knowledge is part of the CMT journey. Whether you are searching for clinical trials, looking for specialists, looking for updates in therapies and treatments, seeking to better understand your diagnosis, learning how to manage and cope effectively, finding the right evidence-based information is key. And because of generous donors like you, MDC has been able to provide this information and help move research evidence into action. We help communicate research findings to those who need it by sharing information in a user-friendly and accessible way. We advocate for policy changes that will have a positive impact on people living with CMT, such as fair and timely access to innovative medicines and therapies and the rare disease strategy. We help to facilitate partnerships so that the Canadian neuromuscular lived experience is at the forefront of raising standards of clinical care and research. To ensure you can access research-related information easily, we launched a research hotline. So feel free to email us at research@muscle.ca or call us to receive the information you need. At MDC, we believe knowledge is power. And while each person has a unique journey, Thanks to your support, we are able to improve the lives of Canadians affected by CMT and other neuromuscular disorders. We're able to increase the collective power of our community and get one step closer to cures. Thank you for the role you play to make, in making these incredible advancements possible. Have a great time today when you walk or roll. Dr. Osmond, thank you so much. Well, our next guest is just back from Tokyo where he represented Canada in Parasite. Alberta's Ross Wilson has not slowed down since his double silver win performance at the 2016 Paralympic Games in Rio. Since his diagnosis with CMT, Ross has taken a keen interest in the research on exercise and training as it relates to CMT. Let's meet Ross and hear more about his journey. For sure. So um, I guess as a, as a kid, I played a lot of sports and uh, it was kind of um, a slow runner. And so we just kind of assumed that it was just that I needed to work out more and stuff. Roughly my first year of university. So I'd have been around 18, 19. And I started to roll my ankles a whole bunch and I was constantly getting sore ankles. And it was that I went to a podiatrist and, and when he looked at my feet, he said, there, there's probably something else going on here. It looks very similar in symptoms to, to this condition called CMT. I was referred to a neurologist here in Edmonton who did a nerve conduction study uh, and they were able to confirm that I, I did have CMT. And then I put it aside and left it alone for, I don't know, uh, 10, 10, 15 years kind of thing. Um, and it was actually back in, uh, in my late twenties when I was working and I started to just realize that things were getting harder. Um, at that point I'd kind of bloomed up to around 280 pounds and it was, a uh, an annual physical with my, my family doctor where he knew of the nerve conduction study results. And so he knew I presented with CMT that we didn't have a formal diagnosis. 
Um, and he sat me down and said, like, look, you, you really need to think about what you want from your life. You have this condition. There's research out there that suggests that, you know, managing your weight and managing your active lifestyle helps to improve the quality of life. So that's when I actually went through the proper uh, proper channels through another neurologist, had the uh, genetic testing completed, and that's when I found out I had CMT type 1X. It's very easy to just, just kind of deny it and, and say, well, this isn't it. But I think it's really important to actually take the time to, to reflect on, on the news that you've received, understand that it is upsetting and that there is that grieving piece connected with it, um, understanding that this does have lifelong implications for you, and then eventually getting to that step of acceptance and how do you move forward and how do you how do you have the best life that you can have? Like at the end of the day, we're, we're all slowly breaking down, right? It's just some of us with uh, these neuropathies break down a little faster. There was a man by the name of Anthony Zahn who, uh, he unfortunately passed away now, but he competed for the U.S. and he too had charcot Mary 2 syndrome. And so my friend was watching Anthony racing around on his bike and she said, you know, his hands, his legs, like his, just his, the way his body looks is very similar to yours, Rob. I know you have this condition and I know you've taken up cycling and you enjoy it. Have you ever thought about racing or maybe pursuing Paralympic kind of stuff? And I figured, well, you know, I'm far too old for that. Like this is too much work or whatever. Um, but I'll try racing. And so I signed up for kind of a local local race in 2013 in Alberta. Uh, and it was just, uh, I tried it out in Canmore and it was my first ever. And it, I didn't come last, but I came pretty close to last. But I had a great time and I really enjoyed it. Sharing your story helps to attract like-minded people, right? Um, so even on the, the national team, uh, I shared my story with uh, a publication called Canadian Cycling Magazine. And as a result of that, a man in Cranbrook, BC, by the name of Tristan Chernov, read the article and he said, hey, I also have charcot Mary 2 syndrome. I also race bikes. Like, I could be like Ross, kind of thing. Tristan's gone on to win, I think, 15 world championships. He's Canada's most decorated cyclist of all time now. I think the more information we can get and the more stories that we can share between people, the, the better everyone else will be. If I hire a strength coach or something like that, I'm pretty, pretty upfront with them about my condition. And what I try and do is really... I look for individuals who, who are going to work with me, who are willing to do the research and willing to understand uh, a lot of the symptoms and the condition itself. And I share a lot of resources with them. I do, I do a lot of my own research around what sort of strength training will work for me. And it's difficult to reach out to a, like a, an able-bodied sports group and say, you know, I want to be part of this, but I happen to have a disability. So can you, can you make this work for me kind of thing? But at the end of the day, sometimes it is just, you know, making yourself vulnerable and saying, you know, I just want to have fun. And so to do that, I need to make myself a little vulnerable. So for those individuals who are participating in the CMT walk, like please try and rally as many people as you can and, and make this a huge event. I would love to see it grow. Try and inform people and, and just teach the, the rest of the world about uh, about this condition and, and how we can all work together to help it. Right? Thank you so much for joining us today, Ross. And congratulations on being part of Tokyo 2020, which now that I think about it, took place in 2021. Uh, but an amazing story. We're so proud to, to have had you with us. Uh, speaking of stories, advocate, artist, and author, Linda Crabtree is with us today as well. And she's well known to the CMP community. And she's openly shared her personal story in an autobiography, aptly titled CMT and Me. With over 79 years of lived experience and 39 years as an advocate for the CMP community, what started as an outreach to find others living with the same diagnosis led Linda to launch and run CMT International, where she's connected with people across the globe to share stories, coping strategies, information, and so much more. Thank you, Linda. Thank you so much for joining us here. Today. I've been coping with CMT since I was about 16 months old, and I'm 79 now. I've lost all the movement from the knees down. I'm losing the use of my hands. My vocal cords, lost one of those, had it operated on, and thank heaven I've got it back my voice back anyway. I'm only working with half a diaphragm, so my breathing is affected. But during the second summer of uh, university, I got bored. It was 1984, and I thought, I'm going to find out more about CMT. So I wrote letters to editor, the editors of every newspaper in Canada and every newspaper in the United States. Before I knew it, I had between four and five hundred people writing me at my home wanting information on CMT. 
I didn't have any. I didn't have a thing. So I figured, start a newsletter. So the first letter, newsletter, I had stuff inside saying, thank you. This is why I'm doing this. Please write to me. Tell me about yourself. Let's get some doctors on board. Let's get some things going so that we know what we're doing and what we've got. And before I knew it, I had people coming out of the woodwork. It was wonderful. And they were all curious. They were all looking for help. So we registered ourselves as the uh, Charcot Marie Tooth International Hereditary Motor and Sensory Neuropathy Perineal Muscular Atrophy Association Incorporated, CMT International for short. After 18 years, 103 newspapers, 32 pages. We'd reached between four and 6,000 people around the world. We had a string of researchers and physicians, orthopedic surgeons, neurologists with us. We had run three conventions with people from all over the world and doctors all over, three Facebook groups. We need, our, we need awareness. This thing exists, this thing isn't fun. Let's do something about it. I wish more people knew that it is not just a little light, nothing, go home and forget it, like some doctors tell people who are diagnosed, because it is not. There are now, I think, 90 plus different types, and they affect people from very lightly to like myself and worse than me. When I'm working, I don't feel the pain because my brain's on something else. I read a lot because when I'm reading, I don't feel the pain. The pain is one of the, that motivates me. The other thing that motivates me is the people, the people that I meet through Facebook. And at any time I can log in and talk, post something, get answers from a whole mess of people. And when I really feel rotten and I open up the computer and somebody's there who feels rotten too, Hey, we can feel rotten together. One thing I'll say to people with CMT is please learn about your type and find out what type you have. And genetic diagnosis can tell you, know what you've got and how to cope with it. And if you, if you have trouble finding out, keep pushing. And above all, don't panic because you will cope. Millions of us do. Don't beat yourself up because you've got CMT. You can't change it. You can't cure it. It's part of you. Make the very best of it. Be the best person you can be. And that's all life wants. That's all life is. Just be the very best you can. Wow, Linda, your contribution to the CMT community is just amazing. Thank you for everything that you've done and that you continue to do. And from one amazing leader to another, Stacey Lintern, the CEO of Muscular Dystrophy, started her career in healthcare and has been with MDC for nearly 13 years. It's so great to meet you, Stacey. Thank you, Ben. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. And so great to see the CMT community come together today. On behalf of MDC, I'm thrilled to be here to thank the Walk for CMT committee for their work in making the first ever Walk for CMT such a success. The fund raised by this event will support MDC in our work with the CMT community. Thank you to everyone who registered, spread the word, fundraised, and donated. Like Linda, firefighters across Canada are committed to helping Canadians affected by neuromuscular disorders. Firefighters have been with MDC since the beginning and answering the call to raise funds and to raise awareness. You've seen them holding boots, camping on rooftops, pulling enormous fire trucks, but did you know that they are also likely to provide entertainment? There are some talented musicians in their ranks for sure, and here's one such group, Dirt Road. We 
wait to see you at the next event. I'm going to be there and I expect you to be there as well. All right. It is almost time to announce our total, but you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer because we've got some prizes to draw for. And for that, I'd like to introduce my friend, Kevin Harrison, the Director of Corporate and Business Development for MDC. Merci Ben d'être ici avec nous aujourd'hui. Tous ceux et celles qui se sont inscrits à la distromarche pour le CMT cette année, on participé à un tirage au sort pour gagner l'une des dix paires de pantoufles Cozy Souls. J'en ai moi-même une paire et il m'aide vraiment à garder mes pieds au chaud. J'ai le plaisir d'annoncer que Taylor Newman, Linda Willard, Ross Wilson, Mark Lindsay, Kate Leeton, Kendra Dazanowski, Angie Bratton, Brittany Moulin, Peter Arnberg, Kelly Hall, en recevront tous une paire. Félicitations 
nous vous contacterons pour vous envoyer vos prix. Thanks, Kevin. And thank you to all of our registered participants. And that just about wraps things up. Uh, but before we sign off, we've got an important announcement. Do you, um, do you want to know how much money we raised? Do you? <laughs> I thought you did. All right, Stacy, are you still here? I'm here, Ben, and I have the fundraising total. We know there's still donations coming in, but I'm very excited to announce that we have surpassed our fundraising goal, raising over $100,000 in support of MDC. Thank you. As you head out to your walk or roll today, please remember to tag us on your social posts and use the hashtag walk for CMT so that we can join in your fun. Enjoy your walk and stay safe. Wow, Stacey, that's incredible. And thank you and to everyone who registered, donated, and supported the first ever Walk for CMT in support of MDC. Also, thank you for allowing me to host this event. It's been a real honor. All right, now please welcome our friends from United Firefighters of Winnipeg and the Winnipeg Fire and Paramedic Services to lead us off. Hi, I'm Rob Labossi, Captain with the Winnipeg Fire Department, Executive Member of United Firefighters of Winnipeg, Local 867, and a member of Muscular Dystrophy Canada's Firefighter Relations Committee. I'm here today with MDC chapter members Dana Babeck and Alan Bartley, retired battalion chief and longtime supporter of Muscular Dystrophy Canada. Winnipeg Fire and Paramedic Services and United Firefighters of Winnipeg have been proud partners of MDC for decades, raising funds and increasing awareness about neuromuscular disorders. I'm going to ask Al to lead us off today with a few words. Al? It's a great day for a walk here in Winnipeg. We hope the weather's cooperating wherever you're walking and rolling. Stay safe. Remember to share your pictures by tagging MDC or using the hashtag Walk4CMT. All one word. Have a great walk. Big thank you to everyone for their support of the first ever Walk for CMT. Al, Dana, are you ready to rock? Let's go. 